Welcome back to the channel, guys. So, the PlayStation Classic is one week away. 100 bucks, 20 games. Tons of people are excited, but I think there might even be a lot more people who aren't. There's so many people who have canceled their pre-order, who are disappointed, so on and so forth. Really, it's going to be a subjective thing. Is what this offers, is it something that is going to be of value to you? Are you excited? Is it something that is disappointing? You just don't want to spend your money? Hey, it is what it is, but we have some answers concerning this system. And some of this stuff annoys the crap out of me. And that's what I want to take a look at. So, the PlayStation blog from Sony Europe, they've given some answers. They've got a frequently asked questions blog post put up. And I find some of these uh, answers and information interesting, if not a tad bit irritating. So that's what I want to take a look at today and comment on some things that may frustrate the crap out of some people. So we already know this thing's coming out the third. It's going to have 20 games, two controllers, HDMI cable, and a power cable. No brick. Um, but we do have some answers from these guys. So let's skip the this, this stuff we already know uh, for the most part. They talk about how, how big is this thing? How much does it weigh? We already know it's 45% smaller, but they also say that the system is actually smaller than a PS4 game case. I find that kind of cool, but it is what it is. It's a mini classic system, right? It weighs 170 grams, and each controller weighs 140 grams. Man, you guys are taking my job from me. I'll still weigh this thing on the channel. I'm actually going to tear this beast down and see what's inside, what, what makes it tick. I already know it's going to be an ARM-based processor, but definitely want to tear it down when I get my hands on one. We already know the games that are included. There's 20 games. Subjective if you think these games are good or not. I find there's a nice handful of them that I actually like, but there's more on there than I, you know, than what I actually care for. We've already talked about that, so that's going to be on you. Hopefully, we can fix that problem, and I think we will within a couple days of this thing being launched. Here's where things get interesting, though. With the game list, um, we already got a little inkling of this before, but this frustrates me to no end. So the NTSC, the U.S. version, and the U.K. or European version for, you know, whatever countries in Europe are going to be releasing this thing, it contains the same games. It's the same setup. It's just the packaging is going to be different. That is what we know. It's the same device. They were very lazy with this, in my opinion. doesn't matter if you agree with that or not. In my opinion, I feel Sony was very frickin' lazy doing this. Okay, fine, the same games across the board for the U.S., North American release, and the European release, but why? Why are we doing this part? So here we go. This is the part that really annoys me. These are the NTSC versions of the original releases, except the following, which are the PAL versions. So there's a problem with that, but let's read which versions are PAL. Battle Arena Toshinden, a 3D fighter. Cool Borders 2, a snowboarding racing game. Destruction Derby, a racing game. Destruction Derby, you know what it is. Grand Theft Auto. We know a Grand Theft Auto. This is a top-down, old-school Grand Theft Auto. There's some driving elements, a lot of crazy stuff going on. Jumping Flash, a very unique and original game. Um, I dig it. It's an all right game. I don't think it's amazing, but I think it's pretty cool. Odd World Abe's, Odd World Abe's Odyssey. Pretty sweet little game. Resident Evil Director's Cut, Tekken 3, awesome 3D fighter game. Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six, little third person, I, I think. I don't remember. I didn't play this. Uh, but it's it's you know what it is. It's Rainbow Six. Those are the PAL versions of the games that we're getting. Why did they do this? What's the positive and what's the negative? There's pros and cons to this. So these games are going to have multi-language uh, options in them. Whereas possibly the NTSC versions, I don't recall what some of these, I think like Grand Theft Auto might have, I don't remember. Um, but more than likely, most of these games that were released in North America, they did not have multiple uh, you know, language options, especially if they were released for the U.S. The U.S. versions um, would mostly just be in English. There wouldn't be other language options. So to release a console like this in Europe, there's tons of different languages that are spoken. So if these games supported that with the PAL region version... Um, multiple language options, that's what they're putting on here. So that's kind of cool in some sense, but at the same time, PAL versions of PlayStation games play in 50 hertz. If the game wasn't like optimized for it, 
the music's not going to sound right. Sound effects are not going to sound right. But no matter what, playing in 50 hertz, the games are slower than their North American counterparts. So people have already told me, like, hey, I've played Tekken 3, the PAL version of it on the PlayStation, and it sucks. Um, it's slower. It doesn't feel like the same game. And that is a huge problem. Games like racing games and fighting games, if they're playing in 50 hertz and you're accustomed to playing in 60 hertz, the NTSC standard, you're going to notice that. Why did they do this? They did this to be lazy. Let's just be honest. They didn't want to make multiple versions of this system and have to flash multiple versions of the games across the world. They did in Japan. Japan's getting some awesome ass games and they don't have to worry about PAL region games on their version from what I understand. I mean, why would they? They would be up in arms if they had PAL region versions on, on you know, the Japanese release. Nuts. Nuts, I say. Not cool stuff, Sony. Um, you know, it is pretty much confirmed. Everybody's saying that it's the same version between the European and the U.S. release. It's the same games. The journalists who played this earlier at little PlayStation, uh, Sony little gathering, you know, where they showcase the, the classic. They played some of these games and they were PAL region games and that was noticeable. That is redonkulous, guys. We don't want to play these games in 50 hertz, but hopefully, hopefully we can fix that. This is an ARM-based system. We already know that. We don't know the exact specs of everything on that board. I am going to be tearing this bitch down and finding out what we are working with. Um, it is using PCX uh, rearmed emulator, which is a very common emulator. A lot of people use it on multiple different devices. Um, so hopefully, I'm thinking within a day or two of this being officially launched and in the community's hands, people are going to figure out how to hack this thing, how to fix these glaring issues, right? So that's like the biggest problem to me um, is these PAL region things. You know, the games are subjective, all that. But let's continue because there's a lot more information here. We do have some multiplayer games, so they answer that. It's obvious if these games were multiplayer games back in the day, they are multiplayer games here. So two controllers, you can play Battle Arena. So Shinden, Tekken 3, Twisted Metal, uh, Mr. Driller, all those games, two players, no issues. So, I mean, big deal. I don't know who the heck's asking these questions, right? Like, whatever. But, hey, they tell you which games are two players. Here's another thing that's kind of interesting. Will the PS Classic perform upscaling? The PlayStation Classic outputs video on 720 or 480p. Your display device may also perform some upscaling depending on the model, right? So we're looking at 720. I'm assuming they're saying 480p because maybe some games transition um, with their end game menus to 480, so on and so forth. But definitely not optimizing this uh, classic system here. They could have done some tweaks to get 1080, um, but it, it is what it is. I think these games may play fine and look fine in 720. But, you know, 720 you would want to use for you, your scan lines and some other, you know, options for filtering and stuff like that. But this system doesn't have any of that. So they could have done, uh, you know, some kind of... 1080 uh, output and you know it would have been fine I think but 720 works I don't really have an issue with that but it would have made more sense at 720 to have some kind of options you know maybe some scaling options filters stuff like that but nope we don't get any of that how long are the cables this is the other thing that I find interesting because it's kind of odd to me the HDMI cable is two meters so it's almost 10 feet long both included controllers are 1.5 meters so about what i mean five feet or so something like that uh you know you're getting no the hdmi cable is two meters so that's what uh six almost seven feet my bad i'm 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 tripping here right the hdmi cable is is two meters so almost it's a little over six feet the controllers of you know five feet about five feet in length why would the controller length not be longer than the HDMI length? What? Like, if you're sitting in front of your TV and you want to have this PlayStation Classic nestled in your entertainment center, you know, you're going to be five feet away from your TV. Not a problem if you're using, you know, 20-inch monitors, I would say. But if you're using like a 44-inch to 65-inch TV, you don't want to sit five feet in front of that. So what, you're going to extend the, the HDMI cable out? It doesn't make sense to me, but, you know, it is what it is. It's listed as 70, about 78 inches, 59 inches. Yeah, so about 5 feet for the controller. Yeah, I mean, the controller length is longer 
than the NES Classic version back, you know, when it came out. It's a little smaller than the Super Nintendo Classic. I don't know if they'll release some kind of uh, extensions for this. I'm sure some company will make them, but then it's not going to have that cool little plug, you know, on the end that kind of matches the system. So I, I don't know. This isn't going to be a big problem for me, but I could see it being an issue for some people. It is what it is, guys. Which cables can I use to connect? Comes with an HDMI cable, and that's it. There's no analog output. HDMI, that's what the point is with this kind of system. Can I use DualShock 4 or PS2 or PS... No, you cannot use any controller but the PlayStation Classic controllers that are shipped with it. That is it. We've already heard about that. Um, hopefully somebody will figure something out. People figured out with the Neo Geo Mini how to use other controllers. So possibly that'll happen with this. I think it would. I mean... It's going to have to. It's using open source emulators. It's an ARM processor. We know it's going to happen. How did disc change work? So if you got games that are multi-disc games, like Final Fantasy VII Metal Gear Solid, you would, when you reach the end of the disc and it says, hey, swap the disc, dude, you'll press the open button. There you go. Switches discs. Discs. Damn, man. I'm like, I can't speak today. Changes your discs. It makes sense. I mean... If you had an original PlayStation, you would have to get up and hit the open button uh, to swap discs anyway. So, all right. I, I don't really see it working with a button command on the controller. Maybe somebody will figure that out. But I'm not that concerned with that. Because it's going to take a while before you get to the end of the disc anyway, right? So, if you've got to get your ass up to press that open button once, big deal, in my opinion. Not a, not a problem. Memory cards and save states. So, we have 15 virtual memory cards. Each title, for each title, which you can manage from the console's main UI just like the original PlayStation. But once you delete a file, it's gone. There's no recovering it. That's kind of to be expected. Um, they also talk about the save states, essentially. You get one save state. That's if you hit the reset button while you're playing the game, it will create a save state. Now, I'm pretty sure from the user interface when you select your game, you can choose to jump into that save state. You only get one save state, though, guys. It's gone. You hit that reset button, it overwrites it. You only get one, so some people may be annoyed with that. You're going to have to get accustomed to using one until this thing is hacked and they open it up to where you can use more, right? Um, can you use System Link? Obviously not. Seriously. No, no System Link. Um, what does the user interface look like? This is what it looks like. What are the options? Um, and what are the options available at a system level? There's no answer to that. That's just like... Here's the screen. Take a look at some, you know, images. That's it. Let's, <laughs> you can't change discs now. You can change discs only when instructed to. Bam. So that's it. I mean, there's, there's resume, one resume point or save state. Memory card slot. Kind of cool. It looks like the original stuff. Guides. You can go to the product page. Game select. That's it. I mean, it's fairly simple. I mean, you get a screensaver option. I guess it just dims the screen. Um, language options and restore. That's it. Nothing major, right? So I don't. I don't really. I mean, the user interface not really um, a lot of things going on there. You know, it is what it is, guys. Power source. You're going to use the USB cable with a brick that supports five volts, one amp minimum. Does not include that. Um, no, you cannot download games. No, you can't buy extra games. No, it does not read discs. Who the hell is asking these stupid questions? Why? How closely does the design match the original? It matches it very well, to be honest. I think this thing looks sweet. Really does. I think a lot of people may buy these, especially if they get clearanced out and use them for Raspberry Pi cases. But from what I understand, there are companies working on some sweet-looking Raspberry Pi cases that are PlayStation Classic inspired or PlayStation 1 inspired. Will the PlayStation Classic include the original startup sound? Yes, it will. That's cool. There's no music or anything in the background when you're scrolling through the games. They didn't do anything unique with that, which I thought would be a nice touch that, hey, you could turn the music off. You don't want to listen to it or listen to it. You know, whatever. But they didn't include that. But it does have the original, you know, opening sound kind of sequence. I think that's cool. That's definitely a nice little touch. But... It is what it is. So a lot of people are saying lazy cash grab. Um, hey, you know, every business, you can consider anything a cash grab. They're here to make money. Is this thing lazy? Uh, you know, that's going to be subjective for a lot of people. My opinion is, yes, this is a lazy attempt. Obviously, there's some effort put into this, but they really could have polished this up quite a bit. Despite the game selection, they could have, you know, 
made sure that the NTSC region got NTSC versions, the European region just got NTSC versions, or if there's games that really need to have those language options, fine, give them the PAL options, but I don't know, maybe people in those regions would have just preferred to have the NTSC. I don't know, but, I mean, I don't live in those regions. I care about the region I live in and what option I'm given, and I'm given PAL region games for almost half of the games. There's nine games that are PAL region. That's almost half, guys. I think that's stupid. So half of these games are going to play in 50 hertz. Is that correct, Sony? What kind of nonsense is this? So really do appreciate you guys hanging out with me. Smash that like button. Subscribe if you haven't done so already. Make sweet ass love to that notification bell. You know what I'm talking about. And with that said, guys, I will catch y'all next time. Peace out. Bye-bye. And boom.